Hi everyone, it's Sissy from Absolute Potential Health and Performance here today and this video is going to go into a myofascial stretch of the obturator internus. A lot of people haven't heard of the obturator internus, at least not as much as they have um, as muscles like the piriformis for example, which a lot of people know can contribute to pain in the glutes. The obturator internus is another deep hip rotator and can actually be a lot more important and have a play a bigger role in regards to um, hip pain, um, glute pain, and most importantly in things like pelvic floor pain as well um, than muscles like the piriformis. If we take a look at our spine model here and this time focus on the, the pelvis more so, the obturator internus actually comes in and covers this little hole here, which you might see the obturator foramen. It actually covers that little hole and then passes outside of the pelvis and comes in back and attaches to the back of our um, thigh. So it actually contributes to external rotation. So this movement here of our leg. Now the way it actually contributes to pelvic floor issues is that part of the pelvic floor, so part of the deep pelvic floor, the levator ani, part of that actually attaches in to um, a tendon which is actually found on the obturator internus. And this muscle can actually get really, really overactive and tight. And for a lot of women, this can actually present as abdominal pain. Um, a lot of people think that it's ovarian pain, for example, um, and that's because of its connection to the pelvic floor. So if you've also been told that you've got a tight or overactive pelvic floor, um, stretching this muscle may actually help to reduce those symptoms um, associated with a tight pelvic floor because of its association um, basically directly with the pelvic floor. So, as I said, it's actually a really, really important muscle and can contribute to lots of dysfunction and pain in the hip and the glute area. And this stretch today will show you how to effectively stretch it according to myofascial principles. So, as I said, this muscle, because of its attachment, actually externally rotates um, the hip. That's its main function. So, the first position um, that we're going to get into to stretch it is what's called a 90-90-90 position. So, what we're going to do is come into, basically, 90 degrees of knee flexion, 90 degrees of hip flexion, and then 90 degrees sort of in this um, uh, plane as well. So that's both the front leg and the back leg. And you can see um, my legs basically look like they form a bit of a square. The leg that we're actually stretching is the back leg. Okay, so that one we need to make sure we've got 90 degrees in all um, joints involved. Now, just a bit of a um, warning for people that have knee um, medial collateral or MCL um, issues, you may find this a little bit painful. For you, you may just need to bend that back knee a little bit more just to take the stretch off that MCL. Otherwise, what we're trying to do is, again, 90 degrees of the knee, 90 degrees of the hips as well. First thing we need to do is think about pressing both knees into the ground. Okay, we want to try and get both knees into the ground as much as we can. From there, we actually then want to think about um, pressing our bottom or our sit bones into the floor as much as possible. Okay, so we want to try and sit those hip bones into the floor as much as we can while keeping the knees down onto the floor. There then is going to be a slight internal rotation of the leg that we're stretching. So the way that's going to look like, remember external rotation is turning out. Internal rotation then we're going to think about basically pressing that back leg in towards the middle slightly. And you'll see that as you try and do that, as you try and rotate that, hip, that leg in, you'll actually automatically start to lift off that same side sit bone. So the key is to try and maintain both sit bones on the floor as much as you can while doing that internal rotation of the same side leg that you're stretching. So again, pressing both knees into the ground. We're pressing our sit bones into the floor as much as possible, so trying to keep them level on the floor. And then we're gonna go into a slight internal rotation and we're trying to prevent that rotation, the lifting up of the um, sacrum on the same side that we're stretching. Some of you will already start to feel a bit of a stretch. From there, we want to think about nice and tall and erect in the spine, okay? And then we're going to turn our belly button towards the same side that we're actually stretching. At the same time, making sure we're keeping all those other components um, nice and strong. So as we, if we start to lift the sit bone, if we start to um, lift the knees, you'll find the stretch ease off. Um, that's not what we want. So both knees down, sit bones into the floor, slight internal rotation of the leg, 
and we're going to turn towards the same side we're stretching. Spine nice and tall, and then we're going to bring our hands forward and into external rotation in that typical uh, myofascial um, tensioning of the upper limb. And from there, keeping all other components on, we're going to turn towards the side that we're stretching that little bit more. Think about pressing the sit bones down into the floor as much as possible. Pressing the same side knee into the floor and causing that slight bit of internal rotation. And that's the end position. Nice and tall in through the spine and keep breathing. Now, two important things to note with this. One is most of you guys are gonna feel it, feel it in the front of the hip. That's really, really normal and it's a, a byproduct of um, having tight um, muscle or having a tight obturator internus as well as a tight piriformis. So don't give up on this stretch just because you feel it more in front of the hip. It will start to ease off the more you do this stretch. Secondly, um, for a lot of you, you're going to be quite tight and you're going to struggle to get into that position. So as a bit of a warm-up, we can basically do a um, alternating kind of leg swing to get um, us warmed up for that position. So all it looks like is coming into that 90-90 position and then you're just going to flip your legs from side to side, okay? So the arms are going to go in the opposite direction to where the knees are pointing. So we're going to flip as a warm-up side to side. For some people this might already be difficult enough, but this is a really, really great hip um, and pelvic mobility workout. So I'm going to go into that stretch again, this time on the opposite side, and I'll just do it from the back for those of you that you just see it from the back view, okay? So we're going to stretch the left leg now. Okay, so left leg comes into that 90 position. You can see the front leg is also in that 90-90 position. Knees down into the floor. Sit bones need to go down. So see how this sit bones is lifting? You need to think about pushing it down into the floor as much as you can. Slight internal rotation on that side. Knees still press into the floor. Stand up nice and tall. And you're rotating towards the same side. Arms come up and out in front into external rotation. And then that full stretch, remember it is pushing straight out in front, pushing knees into the floor, particularly that back leg, you're pushing the knee into the floor and thinking about internally rotating that leg. And then the sit bone, see how that sit bone wants to come up? The sit bone needs to be pushed into the floor as much as we can. Nice and tall. And relax. So again, I can feel that also both on both sides more in the front of the hip. Um, don't let that put you off doing that stretch. It is, as I said, a sign that that muscle can be tight and will start to ease the more you do it. Remembering first that you just want to get into that position or you can do that warm up that I showed you. Second step is to maintain that position. And then the third step or the third rep is to put that full myofascial stretch where you're thinking about tensioning the upper limbs, pressing down to the floor as much as possible. That's where you often start to feel that really heavy breathing. Um, and that's the final basically rep that you then want to work towards doing three sets of 30 seconds of. If you have any questions or issues, just let me know, pop them in the comments. Um, but I'd love to hear from you as well about that stretch.